The only thing necessary for evil to succeed is for good men to do nothing. It's important that people wake up to what is going on. It's time that we read the Constitution. It is error that needs the support of government. Truth can stand alone. That was given to us by Thomas Jefferson. Welcome back to The Real Story, everybody. My name is Daniel Happen. I've got something really good for you. Uh, tonight what we have for you is a little bit of education on what's called RFID, Radio Frequency Identification. Very interesting thing, huh? It's something you're going to be, well, you're going to be exposed to more and more whether you want to or not, but it's going to be something that you should consider, especially when it comes to your personal liberties, your freedoms, and whether or not you want to live in a society like they had in the late 30s in Germany, let alone the early 40s. So why do I mention this? Well, I had an opportunity to go to the uh, Live Free or Die rally up in uh, Jaffrey, New Hampshire. And while there, I got to listen to and also interview, and hopefully you'll enjoy the interview after uh, hearing her, uh, Miss uh, Catherine Albrecht. Uh, she is a, um, well, it's Dr. Catherine Albrecht, but um, she has been, um, I want to say, at the forefront of trying to expose uh, what's been happening, something you may or may not realize uh, behind the scenes. The whole idea that um, not only do you need to carry your papers, but they eventually want to chip us and they want to chip you, and they want to chip your children, and evidently want to treat you like cattle and like dogs, and they want to chip chickens, they want to chip everything. Plus, they want to chip all your, pro all your products. And what she does is she does a really good um, way of tying this in together of how they want to do this, who's behind doing this, okay, why it's important that we as individuals, as Americans, as people that love liberty, that we fight this and we don't allow this because you're not a dog. You don't need to be chipped. You don't have to show your papers everywhere you go. And the interesting thing, and I've only got a couple minutes for the central, but the interesting thing is if you think stealing someone's identity is easy today, what if I could steal your chip number and everywhere I go I give out your phony chip number and all the things I do, I get caught on film, you know, with a mask of you and your phony chip or I do you with me? It's not helping the people. It's not helping, you know, it's not helping, um, it's not, I don't believe it's good. It's what, it's almost Orwellian of what they want to do in the future. So what I have for you tonight is something really good. It's Radio Frequency Identification Show. That's right, RFID Show and why it's important to you and how this ties into a global ID, how this ties into your new driver's license, the, um, uh, what is it, the ID Act or whatever that they passed, the National ID Act, and what's really behind it and who's behind it. And these are the same people that numbered people in Germany. That's right, when you go behind the scenes, who's behind this, who's money, who's idea, how are they setting up this tracking grid and who's it for? Well, it's for you and it's to track you and it's to track your children and I don't think it's good and you should know about it and being a Sharonite, you should stand up and do something about it. So here we have you, the RFID show. Enjoy. And uh, by the way, if you have any comments, get in touch. You know, also watch the credits at the end of the show. We've got some really good things you see. You may have seen Catherine Albrecht also on our, um, we showed for you uh, Freedom to Fascism, which was a movie by Aaron Russo, who has now passed away about a year ago. And uh, hopefully we keep him in our thoughts and prayers. So enjoy the show. I have a good friend who was driving from Texas to California. She was stopped no fewer than three times at checkpoints along the roads, miles from the Mexican border, about uh, 100 miles north. Stopped, and uh, dogs were sniffing her car. They actually asked her, they made everybody in the car show their ID. She had some kids in the back, and they asked her to roll down the window, and they even asked the kids, hey, is that your mommy? Where are you going? What are you going to do in California? And my friend was actually interrogated. Well, why are you going to California? How long do you plan on staying there? All right, well, that kind of thing, eventually, I think people begin to wake up and say, something, do something doesn't smell right here in my country anymore. And when was the last time you heard somebody say it's a free country? So it, it, right now, I believe, is the moment. And I want to inspire you not to give up hope, because I know when you work on these issues, I've been in the, in the trenches here since uh, 1999. When you work on these issues long enough and you talk to enough people who can't hear you and can't, you know, the message can't get in their heads or... Who knows, maybe they even like all the surveillance. You can lose hope, you can get a little bit disheartened. And I really want to encourage you that in my experience, I've done uh, over 800 hours of radio all around the country, some of the biggest and smallest shows, uh, pretty much anywhere as a guest. And I can tell you that every single radio station that I go on, people call up and they say, what can we do? I want to get involved, I want to change things. So I'm very encouraged. If we've got 15 or 20% of this country, do you know how many millions of people that is who are on our team? 
And you don't need to convince everybody. You just need to get that 15 or 20 percent mobilized. You need to get them out here. You need to get them to join you as you put together actions, as you put together lawsuits to bring some of these criminals in our government to justice. You need to get them out to things like the protests that we did a couple weeks ago uh, down in New York City over putting RFID spy chips into clothing. You need to mobilize people to support uh, lawmakers like Representative Joel Winters here when he's got a bill that is supporting our liberty. And it's not a full-time job. You just need people to understand the issues. And that 10 or 15 percent of the public, or maybe if we're lucky, 15 or 20 percent, is really all we need. One of, my, uh, one of the most inspiring quotes that keeps me going when I get discouraged is I always think of Margaret Mead, who said, you don't need a majority to change the world. All you need is a committed minority. It's the only thing that ever has changed the world. And we are, I think, right on the cusp of creating that revolution. I'm incredibly excited. I know a bunch of you are uh, heading out to, uh, to, to get together with people from all over the country in support, not just of Ron Paul, but of this, this birth of liberty that's happening in this country. So I'm, I'm tremendously excited. Now, since I know that uh, a lot of folks wanted to get an update on RFID, I'm going to give you that update and a little bit of strategy for where we're going to go next. As far as RFID goes, for people who aren't familiar, those are the tiny radio frequency microchips that can be embedded into clothing or shoes or books or plastic products, really anything, and make those objects remotely surveillable or re remotely trackable. If and I've, uh, this is usually how I introduce my speeches. I say, uh, no, how, who knows you're here? How many people had to sign in to a sign-in sheet to walk in here? Pretty much nobody. Your friends know you. You know your friends. But, uh, you know, if somebody wanted to walk around, it would be very hard for uh, someone maybe who didn't like a gathering like this to identify all of us. Fair enough? Well, New Hampshire, being a border state, is going to be targeted soon for a driver's license with RFID in it. In fact, they've already issued 35,000 of them in the state of Washington so far. It is part of a border crossing program. They're called Enhanced Driver's Licenses, or e-passports. They're little plastic cards, and it's literally your state driver's license. But inside of it is a Gen 2 EPC RFID tag. I know that doesn't mean anything to you, but to people in the industry, that phrase means easy to read. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Easy to read from a long distance. They are not ID tags. They're not the kind they put in credit cards to use for payment. They're the kind that can be scanned from 20 feet away. So let's pick this gathering up and let's move it into Seattle, Washington, shall we? And let's say now that uh, even though you still don't have to sign into a sign-in sheet, someone could throw on a nice, you know, gotta love it. All right, somebody could throw on, oh, I don't know, a t-shirt, pair of jeans, throw on a cowboy hat or, you know, what have you, maybe grunge because it's Seattle, and cruise around the crowd with an RFID reader in their backpack, or maybe it could be a woman with an RFID reader in her purse. And simply by passing within 20 feet of any of those people in the state of Washington who have signed up for the enhanced driver's license, they could be identified by the authorities. No need to say a word, no need to even see their faces. They could have sunglasses on, they could have hats pulled down low, but if they've got that ID tag in their wallets, it can be scanned from 20 feet away. So I want you to look around, just do, the, do me a favor and, and, and just look around and see how many people are within 20 feet of where you're sitting right now. And now imagine if you had a gadget in your possession, just put yourself for a moment in the mindset of the watchers, uh, the federal government, uh, maybe, maybe some enforcement agency or other, and now you've got this device in your hand and you just sort of go like this. And right there, I've probably captured about 50, probably about 50 people just by doing that. And then I walk back, get a hot dog and come back and I've got maybe another 100 people right there. Now, by doing that, they can not only know everybody who was here, but they can look up, cross-reference other details. And because we are a border state, we're in the sights of that. So I really want to caution New Hampshire uh, not to join the likes of other border states, uh, primarily Michigan, Vermont, our neighbors, uh, our, our direct neighbors to the east, uh, Vermont and Arizona, also New York State, have also signed up to participate. Now, this is not a mandatory program. They're not putting RFID tags into people's driver's licenses without their permission, but they are being very misleading about what they're telling people in those border states. All right, if you have friends or neighbors that you'd like to help wake up, maybe who you think could be part of that 20% who are active, I would encourage you to uh, go online to Scientific American. 
They just published a six-page article that I authored on this topic specifically for you to use for that reason. Take it to your state legislators, take it to your Department of Motor Vehicles, take it to, uh, if you're from out of state, take it back to your state legislators.